Well, several gun bills are making their way through the state house, but have been held up by Republicans. That is until right now. And as Denver is growing, some people feel like they're being displaced. Now they're taking their concerns to the people who are trying to represent them. And office buildings aren't as full as they were before the pandemic. There's an idea to turn them into housing that's gaining some traction. But first, we're going to take a live look outside over downtown Denver. Still dark out there. Pretty calm as far as I could tell as I was driving in. This morning, we want to see what brought you some joy this week. You can text us at 303-871-1491 or post them to social media using the hashtag 90s mornings. And then, of course, we're going to be sharing it throughout the show. Happy Sunday, everyone. Anusha here along with Greg. And uh, I was kind of hoping maybe today <laughs> a little today. bit, a little bit night. No, not today. Uh, well, it's going to feature sunshine again, but just okay, chilly. Sunshine's good. Sunshine is good, and it's not going to feature a breeze either. Okay, I can, I can handle that. So around the same temperature as yesterday, Today, upper 30s, lower 40s with sunshine minus the wind. So it okay, so that is warm. better. That is better. It is better. I'll sorry, take it. I'm sorry. You're you're right. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, and we should take it because yesterday was chilly. We had that exactly. those breezy conditions. This evening is also going to bring a little bit of uh, snowfall too, but later on, mainly after 9, 10 o'clock oh, at night. Okay. So during the day, things are looking great. Let's get a look at that forecast for us right now. As the HD Doppler radar not showing much, maybe some more snow out towards Salt Lake City and along the I-15 corridor. Otherwise, things aren't too bad. Just just really, really chilly. Upper teens and lower 20s right now in the Denver metro area as you're pushing out towards the east. Still in the upper teens, a few single digits here and there. And even the negatives for some as you're getting into the high country. Wind speeds anywhere between 10 to 15 miles per hour along the I-25 corridor. Not too, too bad. 5 to 10 miles per hour out towards Colorado Springs. Much calmer than what we were working with yesterday. Here we go, though. Sunny and chilly. Another day of uh, that's featuring sunny and chilly conditions, that is. Winds coming out of the southwest anywhere between 5 to 10 miles per hour. Highs in the upper 30s and lower 40s. More snow is on the way. Not going to be anything crazy, but this week is also going to feature some warmer temperatures. We're talking back in the 50s and 60s, really where we should be for this time of the year. That and a whole lot more coming up in a few minutes. Thanks so much for that, Greg. Well, Aurora Police Interim Chief had some strong words saying the system is failing young people after a teenage boy was shot and killed outside of Aurora Town Center Mall last night. This happened around 8 o'clock last night in the west parking lot of the mall outside of Dillard's. Officers were working off duty when there was an altercation involving a group of teens near the food court. And when the officers were, were responding to that, officers were also told about shots fired outside near Dillard's. That's when they found the boy hurt. An officer was doing CPR on the boy until paramedics arrived, but investigators say the teen died. The interim chief said that this is one of two incidents involving youth yesterday and that now is the time to take serious action about youth crime and violence. Juvenile crime, these are young people, is a huge issue. Gun violence involving young people is a huge issue. And quite honestly, uh, the fact that we are chasing these young people, we're arresting these young people, and they're going in one door, not the other, and this is what happens. Folks get hurt, folks get killed. One individual young person dead, another a person uh, shot, two people carjacked, other crimes we believe that are involved. So we're doing our job, but it's time for the courts, the legislature to get serious about juvenile violence. So at this point, investigators say they don't know the relationship yet between the victim and the suspect. Youth violence has been going up in Denver as well, and Aurora police are asking if anyone has information to please contact Crime Stoppers at 720-913-7867. Denver police are also investigating a shooting that left one person hurt. This happened around 4 p.m. on Saturday. Someone was shot in the parking lot in an apartment complex on North Syracuse Street at 11th Avenue. Police are working on suspect information, but they are expecting the victim to survive. Of course, we will update you as we learn more. Also right now, Denver police are hoping for your help. They're looking for Johnny Miklo Flores, who was last seen on Thursday at 9 p.m. This was near East 21st Avenue in Denver. He was wearing a gray Colorado, uh, Colorado hoodie. He is 28 years old, has black hair, brown eyes. He's from Montana, so investigators say he's not really familiar with Denver. If you have any information, call Denver police or you can also call 911. I move that the time for debate on Senate Bill 170 be limited to one hour and time for debate on Senate Bill 168 be limited to one hour during special orders on March 25th. 
Democrats in the Colorado legislature used what some call a nuclear option to end a Republican filibuster. They moved to limit debate on a set of gun bills making their way through the state house. The smallest Republican minority in Colorado history was able to hold up new gun legislation for two days, but now that's ended. The gun bill sponsored by Democrats is seeking to expand the state's red flag laws and allow victims of gun violence to sue gun manufacturers. In a statement, House Democrats said Coloradans are demanding action, not delay tactics. They added the small Republican minority does not have the right to stop votes on legislation. The Republican minority leader says it sets a dangerous precedent and shows a Democrats unwillingness to negotiate with them. They're already the majority. So why why do they need to uh, take it to the next level of invoking this rule? It, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's not good governance. And this is what happens when we have an unbalanced government like we do in Colorado right now. So this now could become the president for the state legislature and significantly weaken the minority party's power. That's a realization the House Minority Leader seemed to well understand in our interview. We did reach out to Democratic lawmakers requesting an interview this weekend as well. A spokesperson for the House Democrat said that they were not available. Well, Denver is changing, and as it grows, some people are feeling really left out, pushed out of the neighborhoods that they have called home for years. Well, this weekend, people in Montbello, East Colfax, and Northeast Park Hill brought their concerns to the candidates running to represent them on city council. Nine News reporter Courtney Yoon was there as people decided who they're going to vote for. East Colfax is going through some growing pains. The rent is every year is going up. The signs of gentrification, of redevelopment, are everywhere, putting residents who've been here a while at risk for displacement. So a lot of people, they move out. That's why residents like Sega Hale came to a candidate forum on Saturday morning. Thank you all for being here. She's been in the neighborhood for 20 years. We have to involve, we have to explain what's going on in our area. These voters want to know what their next city council representative plans to do to keep people from losing their homes. Today we have and will have a very deep conversation on how you as candidates will be champions to stop the displacement we are seeing in our communities. All six candidates came and answered questions. Okay, next one. Would you support an EcoPass option for all? So residents can be informed on election day. If you support the BRT, what will you do to support businesses who will experience significant losses during the construction phase of this project? Food insecurity, the bus rapid transit project, crime reduction programs, among other things, were also discussed. Your voice matters, your vote matters. Myra Gonzalez with the Mount Bello Organizing Committee says displacement doesn't mean just tackling housing. It also means supporting local businesses. It means bringing in the assets that we desperately need, the services and the resources, but in a way that is respectful of the existing community, that protects the existing community. She says they want these candidates to know their district is diverse, rich in culture, and they want to keep it that way. We have a lot of folks who are immigrants, who are refugees, who are assets to the city and who we want to make sure continue to live here. Thanks to Courtney for that story. There are three neighborhoods, Equity and Stabilization or Nest neighborhoods in Denver, City Council District 8. We're talking about Montbello, East Colfax, and Northeast Park Hill. It means that these neighborhoods have been identified as being at risk for residents being displaced because of gentrification. Now, the city of Denver says it's pretty unlikely that office buildings downtown will be filled with the amount of workers they had pre pandemic. So the city just kicked off a study that's tossing around the idea of turning some of those empty buildings into housing. They're trying to see if it is feasible to reuse up to 30 office buildings downtown, and they're looking at a lot of different factors here. The physical aspects of the building, mechanical systems and a lot more. Professor Gregor Henze is a professor of architectural engineering at CU Boulder. One of the greater challenges, he says, if an office were converted, is including retrofitting the already existing AC and heating systems. You know, changes to the ductwork clearly would have to um, take the entire plenum off and you would retrofit everything that is above the plenum and ask yourself, well, do we have enough air to meet the ventilation requirements? I think yes. 
So it is possible, but can typically take six to nine months to do. And there are other things he says to consider too, like adequate sound isolation and high performance windows. Overall, the decision to allow a building to be converted will be ultimately up to the property owner. They hope to have the study done by the end of the year. Well, avalanche danger is very high this year. Search and rescue teams have been very busy. There's a new push to make sure they're getting the support they need.